Hi, I'm Ryan, and you're watching Tips for Healthy Living. Today's topic is, is she the one for you? With wedding season coming up, are you uh, getting ready to ask that special someone, or perhaps you already have asked and have a glimmer of doubt? The time to ask questions is before you even go diamond hunting, guys. So I compiled a bunch of questions from therapists and marriage experts and divorced men who suggest key questions you should ask her and yourself to get to gauge compatibility and reveal potential hot spots in your relationship if you get four or more answers that don't jive with your answers that should give you pause to think and reconsider is she really the one for me it's how you resolve your differences that will guarantee a long and happy marriage so get out your pens guys and write down these questions or ladies it really doesn't matter if you're gonna get married one of you should write these down and ask your significant other these questions. First, hot topic, money. Right out of the gate, the biggest problem usually in marriages is about money. So ask her, what would you do if you won $100,000 in the lottery? So I'm going to ask you a question, and then I'm going to tell you why you should ask that question. Asking that question is to find out her financial priorities. One of the biggest problems couples have is money, and specifically differences in styles of spending and attitudes toward, towards and about their budget. <coughs> Excuse me. Says Karen Sherman, PhD, a couples psychologist in New York City. You'll learn how she views money, savings, and long-term investing. Will all of it go towards cars and trips or most towards retirement? It's not essential that you share the same investment strategies What's important is to use the conversation to, to prompt a discussion about financial behavior, how you pay bills, invest the year-end bonus, or decide on major purchases. If your attitudes don't mesh, now's the time to get that issue on the table and build a consensus. It's really hard to figure out, are we going to have a shared bank account? Are you going to have your own bank account? Am I going to give you an allowance? Stuff like that. It's tricky to, to talk about that stuff when you've already been married. So it's good to have a plan before you go into it. And then you both know what's going on. Second hot topic question. Her family. Ask her, what's your favorite holiday and how does your family spend it? It's important to learn about her family roots. Where, she, where you spend the holidays can be a huge political issue. The underlying issue is whose family comes first, and that stands for who has the power in the relationship, says William Dordery, Ph.D., a, process, a professor of family and social science at the University of Minnesota, and author of Take Back Your Marriage. You should check out some of these books. Next question. Religion. Ask her, do you believe in God? This helps you find out how compatible your faith and religious rituals are. In a Syracuse University study of 120 married couples, those who shared religious holiday rituals report more marital satisfaction than the pairs who practiced holiday rituals separately. It's not necessarily the religion itself that's key, though the particular religion you practice can certainly be a huge issue with her family. It's all the things that go with it. When you engage in ce celebration rituals, there's usually a lot of planning involved. Some, something to look forward to that's meaningful to discuss. Also, you know, who wants to spend Christmas without their loved one? You're missing out on those memories and shared experiences that you could be having together. So that's where it also plays a big deal. Next, her work. Ask her, what's your dream job? Where would you most like to live? You need to know her goals and how far she's willing to go to reach them. Just asking shows support for her career. An important factor, a George Mason University study of 117 married couples found that what the Wonder Bra people have found out for a long time, those who felt they had more support had greater satisfaction than those who felt unsupported. It's also a good time to find out how far she's willing to, to move away from her family. It's a very unappreciated area of stress where are you going to live, whose family you're going to live with or near hers or yours, says John K. Miller, Ph.D., a licensed marriage and family therapist at the University of Oregon. Next question. You asked her about her work, now it's about yours. Ask her what was your dad's work schedule like? You need to find out where, whether she's already lived with a man who's had the same work ethics and schedule as yours. Maybe her dad worked a 7 to 3 shift every day of his life, came home and played with the kids until they went to bed and never worked weekends. 
Maybe he owned a business and set his own hours, so he was always home for dinner. But your job, or your future job, may require late meetings, 60 hour work weeks, and business trips that can put stress on a relationship. Working until 9 to 10, sometimes later, night after night, is a constant source of stress with many wives. I know I work a lot of wet late nights, and my fiance doesn't too keen on it all the time. A friend of mine in publishing told me she does she still doesn't understand that this is the nature of the business at deadline time. It's not the life she was used to. Something to think about. Interests and dreams. Ask her, how do you envision your life in five years? It's always good to have a five-year plan, right? This will help you find out whether she wants to be a career girl or a stay-at-home mom or a mom with a career. You should know whether she expects to live in a big house in the suburbs, an apartment in the city, or a farm in the rural Kentucky. More and more research shows that, the, uh, that opposites attract. Notion is a myth. Successful couples usually have more similar priorities than not, says Leslie Parrott, EDD, author of Saving Your Marriage Before It Starts. A couple has to have similar goals and a long-term plan worked out together to reach the, these goals and even more important a similar tolerance for risk and sacrifice if you don't share the same values there'll be a constant source of conflict in terms of how you spend your time and money see money came back into the, the fold there next topic discipline style ask her what do you think of spanking as a punishment you need to hear her thoughts on disciplining children we assume you've worked out whether you both want kids and maybe even how many. You've done that, right? Tell me you've done that. Okay. But how you'll discipline them is a topic that's often overlooked. Bringing it up the next time you see an unruly child at the restaurant shooting jelly packets across the booth, ask her how she'd handle it and how she was, she was disciplined as a child. Either we tend to follow the way we were raised or if something was objectable about the way we were raised, we do the opposite. Dorothy says different parenting styles can cause the most strain on a marriage because they can be a daily, even hourly, source of conflict. Depends on how much your kids get in trouble. It's chronic acid on a relationship, says Scott Stanley, Ph.D., coordinator or co-director of the Center for Marital and Family Studies at the University of Denver and co-author of Fighting for Your Marriage. Got a lot of authors. The next topic, genetics. Why are we talking about your next? Well, here is why. Ask her, what do your parents like to drink? Sounds like a pretty easy question to ask, but here's the data behind it. It's important to know if there's a history of alcoholism in her family. Health problems like depression and alcoholism have a strong genetic component. Dorothy says, if her mother had depression or her father was an alcoholic or, or even a chronic alcoholic, there's a chance, a good chance it could creep up and become a problem in your relationship. It's not a relationship killer unless you use the terms defective gene or terminally plastered mother when discussing it. But talking about her hereditary health risks early will make it er easier to discuss the same conflict should they pop up in your relationship. Next topic, your potential in-laws. Ask her, how have your parents reacted to your previous boyfriends? Ever wondered about that? Maybe you should start thinking about it. You should find out whether they think the current boyfriend is good enough for their little princess and whether they're, they'll pay big bucks for that wedding. If your parents don't approve, there's a potential problem, says Sherman, not that necessarily a deal breaker. Who are, who are you marrying, her or them? You know. What's more important is to learn something about your girlfriend by how she responds if she's the kind of girl who wants to please mommy and daddy or is she secure enough with her for herself to make her own life decisions here's a way to look for clues I suggest asking how her parents have responded to her previous serious boyfriends and trying to elicit how she reacted to her parents disapproval did they make a big deal over the last guy's prison record will they care about yours if she supported her past boyfriends in exchanges with her folks she's probably a keeper Next topic, her father. Ask her, what was your relationship with your father like? This helps you find out her attitude towards men. 
especially towards the one who matters most, before you. If her father was distant and cold, she may seek male approval. If her father was abusive or a cheat, she may have trouble trusting men. And that's something you need to know. If there's any unfinished business in her relationship with her father, it could manifest itself in your relationship, says Sherman. When people get into serious relationships, they tend to look to their mate to give them everything they need. Couples get into trouble when they don't look closely at these tendencies early on. You should also consider her relationship with her mother, which could have this, the very same implications. If she can't pee without calling her mother to tell her all about the details, that's not going to change after you walk down the aisle. And ultimately, the biggest question you need to ask yourself, finally you need to ask yourself this question. Can I ask these questions and have an honest and intelligent conversation with this woman when we disagree? Because if you can't, none of these answers that she gives you really matter. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you've written down those questions and take them all into consideration. I know I have. I'll see you guys next time.